Yo guys, Sly here from Yu-Gi-Oh! Team Backfire, and uh, I'm here today to show you guys my Burning of the Suspendamites deck profile. It's a really fun deck with a really nice grind game, and it's fun. It's, 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 in my opinion, it's one of the best decks I've ever played in my life. It took me a year before I actually bought the deck from when I first, start, first started playing it, because, you know, I didn't have a job when I first saw, started seeing it, but I loved it so much, so when I actually got the money to get it, it was the best investment of my life, personally. Um, first card I played was uh, Tour Guide. Tour Guide's amazing because, you know, it specials anything from the deck, and, you know, yeah, it's one hard Gante. I play, of the Essential Burning of one Graph, one Seer, two Livix. I play uh, the Graphs and Seers at one, you know, because they're at one of the ban list. They special from the deck and special from the graveyard, and Seer can pull off the Dante Seer loop, which is amazing. Um, two, li two Livix because since Beatrice is only at one now, and it's been at one for quite a while, but because of that, it's really nice having the Livix so that if you actually mill it, and just nice mill, because uh, especially summon one of the Burning Fist Monsters from your hand, which can pull off, like, if you had, let's say, both of these in your hand, you can only hypothetically special one and use the effective one, unless you're going to special it for a, for a Beatrice, but Libic will allow that to happen, plus he can allow for a place with Burning Fist Monsters and Thunder Nut Monsters if you only have one of each. So that's nice. Um, I'm also playing for the engine type, three Skarms, because Skarms searches Thor Guide, and that's amazing. Or he searches anything else in the deck, to be honest. Uh, then I play for the more utility day monsters, I play 3v Farfas because, you know, Beatrice with Farfa is really nice to disrupt. Plus, if your opponent attacks Dante with a Farfa's material, disrupts their play before they can attack, so it's nice. I play uh, 1 Alic. He's not really that good anymore because uh, his only effect when he was really good was uh, using him against Monarchs when they played uh, Idea and Ideas. Because Idea would special, it's like, you, they'd play Idea, you'd activate uh, Beatrice, send the uh, Alic, and then they special the uh, Eidos, and then then his effect would activate, and therefore he'd be able to negate the uh, Idis that'd be on the board. So they wouldn't get the second normal summon. So it's that, that's kind of, that's why it was nice, but he's not really good anymore, because he just can't do that. But I play one Calcab, because Calcab sends the back row back to the hand, which is always nice to not have to deal with more back rows. Um, the last few Burning Abyss monsters I play, one Barbar, -bar because, you know, Barbar -bar burn, and two Rubik's, because I play Virgil in this deck, and Virgil doesn't come up really at all unless you have this, and he can be important sometimes. Then, for the Phantom Knight monsters, I'm playing three uh, boots, two cloaks, and one a uh, not one a like um, one uh, gloves. The nice thing is that if you have two of the three, uh, well, sorry, three out of the four type of Phantom Knight cards you run in this deck, you can always pull off a break sword. So it's really nice. I will have a video linked in the description by some by another YouTuber. YouTuber which he shows some of the uh, cool plays with uh, Burning Mist, okay? Then, next part is I play the second Tour Guide engine, which is three Tear Tops, one Tank the Borg. This is a really nice card to play, and they're really nice. It, like, it pulls off Dante with one card whenever you pull this card, and that's really nice because it can unbreak hands. You make hands where you pull, like, five traps. Well, sorry, four traps and one of these live, and you can pull off a Dante with um, some really, really cool back row because if you ever draw spells and traps in this deck, they're always useful, so it's, it's really nice. Uh, yeah. Though, actually, uh, really quickly, if you guys can't afford this engine, what I'd recommend doing is running the Crane Crane engine, which is, just run three Crane Cranes, and, uh, basically it's like a tour guide, but it's special, uh, cards from the extra deck. Otherwise, those other cards are pretty cheap so far. Uh, I'm running two Maxis. Maxi is also expensive, and it's the one, if you, in case you don't know it, I doubt that you wouldn't know it, but uh, it's special, basically each time your opponent special this you draw a card. But if you can't run Maxis, to be honest, you should just pick up Maxis anyway, because they're good in every deck. You, you should always be playing two Maxis in every deck that you play, uh, except for in the case that Maxis at three. Then then play the three, but it's at two right now, so yeah. Um, if, ever, if Maxi ever gets hit to uh, one, still play two. You know, it's kind of logic. Uh, two twin, twin Twisters. If you can't afford this, run MSTs, but this is also one of those cards that you should invest in, because... Over time, it's going to be amazing, no matter what. Right now, personally, in my opinion, it's not too amazing because D-Barrier, uh, sorry, not D, yeah, D-Barrier, a dimensional barrier, is uh, chainable, so it really doesn't help against that, but if you hit a strike or something like that, that can be nice. So, yeah, I play two because of that, but I, I would recommend picking that up to play MST if you can. One Rota, because you get to search your Phantom Might Monsters with it. One uh, Foolish Burial as well. In case, so basically, you use this most of the time to send send Graph, and then Graph special summons this year, uh, not this year, Skarm from deck, and Skarm can then be used to uh, search Tor Guide next turn. So it basically allows you to uh, 
get Graf into play, because any card in your graveyard you can you only pull off tons of times because of Dante and his uh, ability to get stuff back from the graveyard. So, yeah. Then next, for traps, I play three Fog Blades, because Fog Blade is searchable off of, uh, uh, not Rake Sword, uh, off of uh, Silent Boots. And also, you can send him to graveyard using uh, gloves, which can help your opponent place. Plus, he's, he's basically a Fiendish Chain, but if your opponent wants to, let's say, attack your monster and you have nothing to do, you can activate this on your opponent, you're on your own monster, and they can't attack it. So they have to either kill this with like Twin Twister or MST, kill the monster with like a Regi, Regeki or some destruction effect, which is really nice because that can be. People get really annoyed when that happens. Uh, then I play the Solemn Brigade, or what is partially Solemn Brigade, but also something else. Uh, one warning, three strikes. And Vanny's Emptiness. I love this because warning is, you know, amazing. If you don't have a warning, pick it up. Strikes, if you can't afford strikes, I'd recommend running like a bottomless, like a boss and a uh, torrential, something like that. But strikes is also maybe right now not necessarily worth it because the ban list might be coming out, out soon. But if it's not hit, you should pick it up because it's it's useful in everything. And same thing with Vanny's. I believe Vanny's is around like five, but I might be wrong. But it's a good card because it. it, it if you pull Vanity's, they can't summon for a turn, and unless they have an MST, but then they have to waste the MST or something on it, so that's really nice. Um, now I'm to the extra deck. I play in the extra deck. That's there. I play one Dante, Dante Pilgrim. He's summoned via Beatrice, and he has a cool loop with uh, Beatrice that can make him basically a second Beatrice. I play the one Virgil because, you know, you can summon off of Beatrice, or you have the two Rubik's, and he does come up sometimes, and it's really nice when you have him. Then, you know, of course Beatrice, because you wouldn't be able to summon this guy at all if you didn't have Beatrice. If Beatrice is at, uh, like, multiples, you should definitely be playing multiples. Play at as many as you can. If, like, let's say, my, my, my greatest analogy of my life now, is uh, if you could play 14 of this card, I would play 14 of it and one Dante, just so I could recycle the Dante with Seer and special this card off over and over and over. That might not actually be smart, but still, it, basically that's the point. It's that useful. Um, plus, you know, in case you don't know their effects, uh, Dante Pilgrim basically allows you to discard a card and then draw a card. We'll discard a Burning Bispel card and draw a card. And the Burning Bispel card will activate its effect when it hits the graveyard, so it's really nice like that. Uh, Virgil, same thing with uh, discarding a Burning Bispel monster. And you get to return one card from uh, your opponent's field to the extra deck, or graveyard, I believe, as well. I'm not completely sure about that, because uh, I don't use him too often, but when he comes up, he's, he comes up. Beatrice is basically detach a card, send any card from your deck to your graveyard. He can be amazing if you have a Farfa underneath him. You can detach the Farfa and then start your fan note engine, which is really nice. Or, you know, him with a, a Seer and Dante can pull off amazing loops with, like, him with a, a Dante underneath it and a Farfa in Graveyard. Destroy this card, the Dante allows you to uh, add back the Farfa and heal as a special this, which allows you to basically have a second Beatrice. That's kind of what I meant by that, the card, what I was saying before. I play one Downward Magician specifically because of my circumstances where I play a... Uh, Cyber Dragon player a lot, and uh, with uh, Infinity Beam with Take Up Material, he tends to try to take a Dante if it, you know, because why not? Why wouldn't you? Um, so this is nice because then you can just not have a Dante. If Dante's effect will go to the graveyard. Well, Dante will go to the graveyard and his effect will activate allowing that card. So it still has a little bit more advantage. Um, I played, you know, three Mr. Dante himself, or Durante, because, you know, that's his actual name. Because uh, if you don't know, this entire deck, Burning Abyss, is those based off of uh, Dante's Inferno, um, and basically Dante is a real person in real life. He was the author of the book, and the story is about basically a fictional uh, journey th for him through hell, and uh, his real name was Durante, but he changed it, uh, I believe before he turned 18, to uh, Dante, so he cut out the Durante part, or Urin, I don't know exactly what you'd say. Uh, then I'm playing two break swords for the Phantom Engine, it's really nice, well, in case you don't know, Dante Mills 3. Just in case, I have to make sure I say that. Um, Break Sword, because with the Fan Man Engine, he recurs you so much advantage. Because you if your opponent has, let's say, two monsters that are a problem, or a monster and a spell card that's a problem, you can use this guy, destroy one of the monsters or the spell card, and then when he hits the graveyard, you can special summon the two, the two uh, Fan Man cards that you had attached to him back as level fours, which allows you to special summon one of these two, which therefore negates the second problem which is really nice. Stark Rebellion, basically you detach two materials, take half of your opponent's monsters attack, and you can attack him. Basically, you will always hit 45. And if you have, uh, always hit, sorry, not 45, 25. But if you have the uh, Ancient Cloak as the material for it, it's 35, which is really nice. Then I'm playing, for my last view, I'm playing Nightmare Shark. 
Grand Pulse, and Leviar. Leviar, sorry. Uh, Nightmare Shark is basically good for burn damage for the last part of attack. I have actually never summoned him in a game before, mainly because I'm always at a point where it's... My opponent uses too much of his resources, and I can just OTK him after I break the board, so... Yeah. Uh, but he's good. If you if you ever have the case where it pops up, it does happen for people, and he's really useful in those points because they have nothing to do, really, when that happens. Uh, Grand Pulse is basically... It can destroy a set card, and it's really nice because of that. Um, and he's got a really big defense, 2800. Um, then Levier, I've only summoned him once ever, actually. And it was a really funny uh, play, which should be uh, the video we were, it happened, which was literally, uh, for me, it was like two days ago. But it might be like a week, or it depends on when I upload this video compared to the other one. Um, he's good, because when that happened, that was really nice, and it was really needed. My last card, F0. Basically, when you attack your opponent's monster, you can take control of them and attack them with their own monster. So, if you're me, and you have the chance, you will attack your opponent's monster. Take control of it. Kill them with their own monster. It's the best thing to do in, in the world. It's, it, they hate it when it happens. Um, if you can't play some of these cards, like Break Swords are expensive. Um, that's it for the extra deck, really. You can just play, I think, personally, you could play uh, more Grand Pulses, like play a second Grand Pulse. So you have like two Grand Pulses, and then also, I'd recommend probably running, uh, uh, I don't know, maybe Totem Bird. Totem Bird's a good card because it negates uh, the one spell or trap, I believe. Per turn, it's a pretty good card, but you know you're gonna have to figure out exactly what you do with these two as well. Which you could just main one of the cards that have my stack if you want to, or uh, you know, up to your freedom to choose basically. Then for my extra deck, well, sorry, not my extra deck. That was my extra deck. My side deck. I am running a few cards. Give me one second to sort it out because I have it in the exact opposite order of what it should be. Okay, so starting off with the third twin twister. I personally would not run this anymore because it's because of D-Barriers, like I explained at the main deck, it really doesn't come up that often. There is going to be cases where it's going to be true and you're going to need it, but I feel as though it, its benefits don't outweigh the costs, you know? You know, econ terms right there. Um, I have two match team seconds, because I am playing... Show them right now. Dark Law on the deck. One thing I say is, if you don't run this, I'd switch this out for, like, favorite one of this. And you can main this one. This is the card I was talking about maining in the other one, if you wanted to, in the uh, extra deck. He's nice because basically against, let's say, Paleozoics, they're going to go to the graveyard. They're not going to go. Well, sorry, they're going to get banished, not go to the graveyard. They can't be special back out. Um, DDDs go use the graveyard a ton. If you're playing a mirror match, they are going to be a problem for it, too. It's basically a problem for almost any deck in the game. Like, even uh, Mermels, where it's only really one card that it affects that much, is uh, Dragoons, and Dragoons won't be able to search because it's in good grave. So, you know, it's quite nice. Um, the next I'm playing... Three system downs. While, you know, it's partially because of the meta choice of ABCs, mainly because of my friend who plays Cyber Dragons, because he gets annoyed with it, so it's really funny. Because, like, he'll really get into a pure hatred of me after I play this card against him, and I kill him, because he's like, oh, I could kill you next turn, and I do this, and he, he's really annoyed. It's pretty funny. Uh, though this card's amazing against any machine deck, it just destroys them. Like, they're obliterated. I am playing two Dark Holes, um, mainly just for rogue decks was the objective for it. Um, cause, you know, destroy all their monsters and your Dantes will recoup your resources and you can probably attack every game after that. Uh, if you can pull off or if you can get Regeki, it's a good card to run as well, cause I recommend that against Zodiacs and stuff. Uh, cause you dark, like, board reps are amazing against Zeus. Um, but if you can't afford Regeki, I'd recommend running Lightning Vortex. It's like a discard outlet, kind of like a Twin Twister. Uh, we discard a card and destroy all opponent's monsters, which is what, you what uh, Lightning Vortex does, so it's a good card to run. Then, specifically because, you know, Burning Abyss hates Pendulums, I am playing three Anti-Spell Fragrance, because Anti-Spell is amazing. And if you want to, even, you can run these in main completely, which is really nice. Like, really, really nice. Like, it hurts almost every deck, which is amazing, because also, if, like, you play this, they can't even activate Twin Twisters the turn you play it, or Amnesty, which is really nice. Then the last card I'm playing is, uh, World of Korean side, because Pale as Oaks is the explicit reason is I played a guy at a convention um, a few months, like a month ago or two, and just, he was playing Paleo Zox, so I was like, he destroyed me. It was really funny because uh, he basically used Book of Moon on all of my monsters every turn. It was really funny. He pulled perfectly for every turn. It was, it was quite hilarious. Um, World Cree is an out to them. If you don't want to play World Cree, Jinzo is, a, I heard, is better because uh, according to the guy I actually was playing, he was saying that. This card, you basically MST with the, uh, not MST, but they have a card that does MST, apparently. 
and you can play a swing like that against it, and that's Jinzo might be better off for you. Um, a few cards that you might want to play in this deck, if you uh, a few cards to run instead of these cards. Uh, Fiendish Runner Warrior is a good card that I'm thinking about maining in my main, because it basically allows you to search here and send like if you want a Farfra and you don't you didn't mill a Farfra, you have a higher chance of milling a Farfra because you mill Fiendish Runner Warrior that can send any to card in your deck to your graveyard, well any monster card. So that will let you get your exactly what card you wanted for your burning level monsters as a mill. Um, DD Crow is another good one against meta for side deck, or you can main it if you want to, um, because, you know, DD Crow, you can snipe their Lomnia if you're, if you're playing DDs, and that can just cripple them because they don't have any plays after that. Um, one actual thing I forgot to say about this deck against DDs is that Beatrice, this card, with Farfa, you can Farfa with their Lamnia, and then they're left with like a Genghis on board, and it's it's really bad for them when that happens, and it's very easy for you to do, especially when you play my like monster count of uh, burning misses of fifteen. Um, you can also play a uh, Fendi's uh, fiend and uh, Majesty's fiend if you want to, for like a uh, in case you get cherries or something, because cherries is a good way to kill this deck if you if you have cherries or flying sea. Um, that's those are good cards to run. Um, though cherries, to be honest. To be honest with you, uh, Cherries, in my opinion, is not that good of a card to run against Burning Mist. It's good, but it's not nearly as good as people think it is, because if you go first and you don't draw Cherries, I'll go Dante first turn and it won't matter. If you do get a first turn and you Cherries me before I get a first Dante out, then it's really, it is a really good card when that happens, but it's not very likely that that's, that, that doesn't happen often. But for you, like, as a Burning Mist player, you can play Cherries against other people, because you can either you can play it against other people for the effect of playing it against another burning this monster, burning this deck, and if that happens to them and they aren't efficient with playing it, like that with the DD Crow, the one dot that they, they do get, you can kill that. Um, what was it? There was one other card I was thinking of. Uh, oh yeah, plus you can with the main reaction deck, not the main. There's a lot of cards that you can you could cut if you want to. Like if you're not going to play the uh, these cards or the break swords, you can just pick up cherries, which is like ten bucks I think a a, co a copy, but uh. You can play that. Yeah, I don't go to Nightmare Shark personally, and that card can be cut as well. You cut like all of these. You can have six cherry card, uh, uh, six cherry targets in your deck. So you can run like uh, Spirit Dragon for Blue Eyes, um, Infinity if you want to play it against Cosmos. But I played Nova probably personally if I would do that. Um, you can play like truthfully whatever you want. Any Metal Foes monster you can do. You can do anything with it. It's really nice. Um, that's it for the main deck. I will be back in a second. So you guys, I'm back with uh, some test hands I'm going to show you. So, you know, just draw some random hand. I just shuffled the deck, so it's going to be completely random. So this is what I'm opening. Just throw it right down here. I'm going to throw my extra to the side just so I have more room to show. So if you're going first with this, you know, you have your graph. You have that. So if you want to, you can pull off, like, normal that, special that, exes. For Dante, let's this in this case you're going first. You can also go second with this deck pretty easily. You can detach the graph, mill mill three, so yeah, that was an awful. Mill, one, two, three. So you see like this really wasn't that good of a mill, but you have that. But it's all still okay because you'll pull off like the graph, which one special summon this out for you. Or you can go, you know, if you want to, actually in this case, I want to scrum personally because you know, tour guide next turn is good play, you know? It always is basically. <laughs> So right here, you can either stop right here if you want to, or you can pull off the second Dante. Personally, right here, I think having the ability to not mill too much, because you never want to mill too much in your first turn. With <laughs> Sorry for one second. Uh, the first thing I thought, I was looking at my uh, recording software for my phone, and it looked like it wasn't recording for a second. I was like, wait, what? Yeah, sorry about that. And then basically, after I'm done, so sorry for my insane shuffling. I'm kind of known awfully for being that person who shuffles for five minutes straight. It's something that's like a, it's a condition for me, you know? So if you want to, you can special this and pull off the second Dante and then mill. But in, personally, in my opinion, a lot of times they'll try to attack over this and then the Dante because they don't really like having other good stuff pull off. Though, so, uh, yeah. So you can set this and you can pull off, like you see, you have one card, set card, pull off two Dantes if you want to or one Dante in that. Or you can go off. In fact, one of the cards that I would go for is... I'm going to miss this. I should have not missed that. It's kind of bad. Especially in this. And then this will be destroyed. And you have one and two outs to things to strike and stuff. And during your end phase, you can search for the, uh, the tour guide. 
and that's kind of the first way that this opens, which is really nice because you have next turn you have this and let's just say I draw that. So that that's not bad because then I have another opening play. So yeah, that's kind of one one opening play is that's fairly consistently an opening board is because you play eight traps, you statistically will always draw a trap hypothetically. Technically not because you know it's 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 literally like having eight cards as the trap cards is one fifth of the entire deck which is one of my objective with it, was to have that, because then statistic statistically, you will draw one with every five cards. And your opening hand is, you know, five cards, therefore hypothetically you'll draw one. And then if you get the mill off, you can get two set cards, so the objective was to get two set cards and uh, a monster on board. Because, you know, that's really nice. And you can normally you'll use all your trap cards during your turn, and if not, you know, you'll, you'll, you'll pull off all your Dantes before it will be a problem for you, so you should be okay. And... It's really nice with this deck. So yeah, let's go with the second test hand. What will I get? Wow. See, I actually am shuffling. In case you're like thinking I'm a cheater. So I got that, that, ooh, tank, uh, tank the board. That's never a good thing to draw, but you know, it's always okay. So right here, I pulled off Skarm, uh, two Farfas, Maxi, and Tank the board. So if I special up this, well, normal summon the Skarm, because you want to get the Skarm search. Special this out. New Maxi's for Dante, which is this one. Detach the Skarm and mill three. One, two, and three. Ooh. So actually, um, in this case, this is actually really nice for you because right here, this means that you get your set card. So even though you know, like, like I said, sometimes you don't get the uh, set card or the trap. You get this and you get the trap. So that's really nice. Um, plus, you get the Skarm search at the end phase for this. So actually, completely to show you this, you can discard this Farfa and special out the... Uh, Beatrice, which is the end of my deck now, and listen like the first three cards. And in this case scenario, actually, this is one of the best situations for you, is we have this, the Farfa attached underneath the uh, Beatrice, and you can banish this guy from your extra deck, well, sorry, from your, from your graveyard, and add this to your hand. You can set that on the end phase because of Skarm, which is right here. You can search out your tour guide. And note, now if your opponent, like during your opponent's turn, they want to go for some play that you don't want to happen for you, you can activate this, send the Farfa, let's say they're going for an Axis play, you can stop them like that, or whatever card that's going to be a problem for them to lose, you activate that, plus you have Maxi in this case, so you can go for like tons of combo thralls, but I'm not going to even use it because, you know, hypothetically I'm not going to summon at all, except for that one summon. Um, so you can use that, and then you can send one card from your deck the graveyard. So you can send, like, that guy. And then, in this case, you can... They will end, hypothetically, or let's say they go through this and you have to use this. You have your draw. Graph's nice, it's always nice. But now, because you have... Oh, wait, now you have two in graveyard now. So I miscalculated right there. I'm sorry. Yeah, okay. So, yeah, that, 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 that was awful. But still, you know, you, if you have your tour guide, and let's say you actually negate your tour guide, you can use the effects stuff. What I was thinking for a second was that I had three of running responses in my graveyard. In this case, I would not have gone for that because they send. I would send something else probably, but, you know, eh. It's okay. You always make mistakes sometimes. So, like, actually, if you wanted to, you could, since this is dead for you, you could have sent uh, a different one of your cards. Right? Wait. Yeah, yeah, so you could have sent, uh, uh, the card like this, actually no, I guess you have it already, so you could just use that, vanish, oh, wait, no, yeah, yeah, okay, never mind, yeah, I messed up, it's all good, though basically you, you note that you already have a good play, plus if you would have sent, uh, one of these guys, Silent Boots, you could get a second Fog Blade for your next turn, so you can set up plays for your next turn and you can always continuously move forward, note, you should always check your extra deck, well, sorry, check your graveyard in, so that you know what's happening, because right there, you know, that's a perfect example of where I didn't, and everything went bad. Uh, could have gone bad. Though, in that game state, I could have also kept saving myself because I had a Beatrice, and I had the uh, Fog Blade, we stopped one of their monsters, so I have another search, possibly. I could go for tons of more plays, and Tor Guide was a good... So, even though I mis misplayed, I can still live through it, because, yeah. So, that's kind of the cool thing, is if you don't have that one turn set up, you can just set up for a few turns later. And, you know, if I pull off the... Actually, in that case, if I pull off the Tor Guide... I could have maybe milled that last card I needed. So, yeah. Let's go for a third test draw. 
where I draw Farfa, Barbar, uh, Polish Barrio, Solemn Strike, and Skarm. So in this case, what I would do is I personally would play Polish Burial, sending Graf to the graveyard, and Graf will special out Seer. The reason why Seer and not Skarm like normal is because I already have Skarm in my hand. And these other two don't need to be normal summoned because they're kind of just cards that they're, they're good cards to have with your monsters, but not acquired. So right here, if I go for specialing out, well, normaling out this guy, and I go for a Xyz of Dante, because you always go Dante, basically. That's just, that's just the rules. First turn, you always go Dante. And uh, when you have your Phantom Knight monsters, and it's late game and you have some problems, that's when you'll go for the case of Break Swords for that. And Grand Pulse, I personally don't go on Grand Pulse often because Break Swords is normally a better option. But if you're going, wanting to go into F-Zero, just, well, no, that's not F-Zero. This is F-Zero. I'm used to my extra deck being sorted completely. That's me. Um, Grand, uh, Grand Pulse is better for an F-Zero. Not, still not. Uh, that's it, still. Uh, F-Zero. Because you don't necessarily need it. And plus, with the Phantom Knight card, you can just special out and go for that. And that's just better play most of the time. Um, yeah. So, right here, you can pull off this. Send the one, mill the three. One, two, three. See, that's actually good mill because you have the Farfa and stuff. And in this case, you can actually use the Farfa effect if you wanted to. So you can activate Farfa and banish one of your fun's cards, but of course, you're going first in all these draws. Um, and then, you know, you can set this. You can either summon a second Dante or go for a Beatrice, which is what I personally would do always. And the Beatrice is at the back. <laughs> if you can't see what I'm shuffling through, could you? Yeah, you would have been able to. I was looking for the Beatrice, like, right here, because it's always right here for me, or where the downer it is. It's right in between the two. And then, at the end phase, you get the Skarm Search for Tour Guide. So you pull off another Dante next turn, basically. And see, note how all these plays have opened basically the exact same. And that's because the deck is so consistent with having, like, most spreading this decks that you see only run around maybe 13 tops spreading this monsters. Having 15... <laughs> is really good for you early game. It allows you to do for so many first turn Beatrices. And while you only have one Beatrice, it's really good normally if you play the Beatrice first turn, it can stop your opponent and have their plays that they would normally go for just be a little bit worse than it would normally be. So they'll eventually lose all the resources and lose. So like you see, I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. And having 15 allows you to have an extra discard card, ex discard outlet to go for Beatrice, which is really nice. And if you wanted to, actually, as well, you could, like, uh, cut one of the uh, spell cards, like Foolish. You can even do it for one of the trap cards, but I personally wouldn't advise doing that. One of your Foolishes, one of these three, which you have two Blood Twin Hosters, if anything, I'd cut this one if of any of them. You could cut this one for a reinforcement. Uh, not sorry, not reinforcement because that's what, what this card is. You could cut this for a uh, monster reincarnation, and when your Beatrice goes to the graveyard, you can just get it right back. And you know, if you're discarding one of your uh, cards, it's gonna be useful in the graveyard. Like all of these cards are to some degree useful in the graveyard, um, including all of your Phantom Lights. They're all useful in the graveyard. Um, what else? These all of your fundamental traps are also good and used to fill in the graveyard. So like out of your deck you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. About sixteen cards that are not useful in the graveyard. Meaning that the majority of your deck is useful in the graveyard and the other part isn't. So having discard outlets is always good for you. So, you know, if you wanted to play it, you can play it. I personally don't just because I haven't tried it intuitively, and I haven't figured out exactly what I'd cut for it. So, yeah. Um, I think that's good for enough for the uh, showing you for hands, because you understand, I think, basic plays now. Um, that link in the description I'll give you is a one of the videos that I actually learned how to play a Burning Mist with. Um, I'll send out two ones for more of the uh, old school Burning Abyss, when my base was about, when you could play it without fan mites, because, uh, you know, Seer was at two, and uh, Beatrice is at three. I'll show you that one as well, and that one will also be in the uh, not the graveyard, the comments, not the comment section either, the description, because, yeah, you, you can learn a lot from those two videos, and I really would recommend watching them. So, uh, peace out, uh, see, you see you guys next time on Dragon Ball Z Kai.